Elijah Wood is Tom Selznick, a once promising pianist returning to the stage after a five year hiatus. But once he's on stage, he discovers himself to be the target of a plot clearly inspired by a Batman villain. Because should Tom miss so much as a single note, Tom will die. In Grand Piano. Hi, I'm Cinematico Magnifico of AmoralCrackpot.com, and welcome to the Nightly Chill. <laughs> Grand Piano from director Eugenio Mira holds a fairly interesting place in my heart as being one of the first movies I ever wrote about for my own blog on my own website. A short time before that, I had an off-again, on-again relationship with a now-defunct pop culture website where I got my start with movie reviews. When it was clear that the website was already running on fumes, I decided to go into business for myself. I realized I really did enjoy writing and talking about movies, and so I created PulpBusters.com in May of 2014, which has continued on in some fashion to this day. In fact, it may be one of several possible ways you've discovered this review, but by July of that year, I was already testing out material on my own website, AmoralCrackpot.com, and on July 17th, 2014, I wrote a post titled Page 10 Moments. In it, I covered several different movies to highlight the importance of what is known as the page 10 moment, that point within the first act that is intended to hook the audience for the duration of the movie. And as the name implies, this usually happens around the 10 minute mark. And Grand Piano was one of those several movies. It was easily the best overall film on that list, but it was also the biggest mishandling of the page 10 moment. Worse, its mishandling of the page 10 moment was also a warning as to how the rest of the movie was going to play out. The film opens with a nearly four minute credit sequence, which not only eats into the runtime, but also obliterates every notion that Mira knows how to handle pacing. This is then followed up by over 12 minutes, 12 minutes of Elijah Wood's Tom complaining to whoever will listen. He flies into town, complaining about flying to the happy man sitting to his left. He complains to his hot actress wife as he waits for his limo. And then he complains to a radio host as he rides in his limo towards a fancy concert hall. The page 10 moment and the plot both finally kick in some 25 minutes into the film, when Tom opens his sheet music on stage and sees the note that warns him what will happen should he play a wrong note. And what follows is the least interesting thriller dragged out for another full hour. Now, there is a nugget of a great idea present in Grand Piano. There are some decent performances too. Even Mira's overall visual presentation of the material is more than just functional but the movie is simply and painfully dull. There's no life to any of it. There's no tension, no suspense, no thrills to be had, no characters to like or root for, no villain to hate or maybe even sympathize with. Mira gets no mileage out of any of the parts he had to work with. Had Grand Piano been a 30 minute short film, there may have been a cut of the movie worth watching. But as it stands, Grand Piano is a definite no chill. That's going to do it for us tonight on The Nightly Chill. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and follow, and also be sure to leave me any questions, comments, suggestions for future reviews, and maybe even discuss today's movie at greater length. And as always, this video is brought to you in part by our viewers. If you'd like to learn how to support this and other projects, please visit amoralcrackpot.com or check the description below. But until next time, y'all need to make like a tree and get out of here. Thank <laughs> you.